told me that HFOs are great refrigerants with very low global warming potentials, very short atmospheric lifetimes, and a good balance of safety and technical properties. That's a pretty good summary. However, you seem to have a question about these hydrofluoroolefins, or HFOs. In fact, I do. I read something about HFO gases forming something called TFA. Can you explain? Well, the TFA story starts at sea. TFA stands for trifluoroacetic acid and its salts. And seawater contains TFA as salts. It's a natural substance thought to be generated near undersea volcanoes and ocean vents. And about 200 million tons of it are naturally in our oceans today. That sounds like a lot. What effect does the TFA have? TFA is very stable. It does not bioconcentrate in aquatic organisms and does not biomagnify in the food chain. And salts of TFA are essentially non-toxic to mammals. Seawater contains less than one millionth of a gram per litre. When you stand near the ocean on a stormy day, you can taste salt in the sea spray which would contain some TFA. That same spray can also carry TFA quite a distance inland. But what does this have to do with HFOs? I was just coming to that. All HFOs break down in a few days in the atmosphere, which is why they have very low global warming potentials. But some HFOs produce TFA as one of the breakdown products. But you told me TFA is a natural substance, so why does it matter? Actually, a whole range of scientific studies have been carried out to answer exactly that question. These studies have looked at the effects of TFA on a wide range of aquatic organisms. The projected emissions of TFA from use of HFOs, particularly in mobile air conditioning. Projected rainwater concentrations, effects on salt lakes, desert basins, and ocean TFA content. Would the rainwater contain more TFA than the oceans? A study on the effect of the complete conversion of the European vehicle fleet mobile air conditioning to HFO 1234YF calculated that expected average values of TFA in European rainwater would, like seawater, be less than one millionth of a gram, but at a higher concentration than seawater about 0 0.8 of a millionth of a gram, compared to 0 0.2. And the TFA entering the oceans through the river system would only increase the natural quantity marginally. What happens to the TFA in rainwater? A large proportion enters the river system, as it is poorly retained in soils. So the rainwater is expected to add a similar concentration level to river water. But some of us extract river water for drinking water, which means I could be drinking water containing TFA. Yes, but the concentrations due to HFOs would be extremely low. You would need to drink about 5,000 litres, 500 buckets or 25 deep baths every day to reach the acceptable daily intake of TFA set by the European Food Safety Authority. Well, one bucket of water is too much for me. With all these studies and data, why is there so much continuing interest in TFA from HFOs? The HFOs are being internationally recognized as very good refrigerants, foam blowing agents, solvents and aerosol propellants due to their good balance of safety and environmental properties and their technical performance. Due to their relatively recent commercialization, it's only to be expected that their properties continue to be studied and discussed. But remember, in 2015, the UNEP Ozone Secretariat informal brief on ecological issues on HFCs stated projected future increased loadings of TFAs to playas, landlocked lakes, and the oceans due to continued use of HCFCs, HFCs, and replacement products such as HFOs are still judged to present negligible risks for aquatic organisms and humans.
And just recently, the Environmental Effects Assessment Panel presentation at the 30th meeting of parties to the Montreal Protocol in November 2018 again confirmed that view. Understood. Thanks, Brock.